Hey guys, it's Elena. Welcome back to another Procreate tutorial. Today we will be doing a collage piece that incorporates a photo and also a lot of flower stamps and butterflies and a bird as well. And this is inspired by Frida Kahlo and the gorgeous flower crowns in her artwork. And this is sort of a trend right now to do collages that incorporate a photo of a person with their face kind of covered with this uh, this sort of flowers and foliage and things like that. So I wanted to give this a go and we will be using a photo of a person from Unsplash. However, you can use this idea to make portraits of friends and family or clients even or yourself. Um, so you can you can do this as a, as a service for people as well, which is a fun idea. And I will be using my ephemera stamps that come in my mixed media collage brush set. And that is available for purchase in the link provided on the screen and down in the description. Um, however, you can also do something similar with graphics from a collage set, a digital collage set. And these are there's lots of these great um, graphics collections available on Creative Market and Etsy and from individual artists. So you can also find some public domain images of flowers. And it's just important if you are searching the internet and looking for um, photos to use in your collage, it's just important to make sure that they are in the, the, pub, the public domain and um, something that you can use that is royalty free, that it does not have a copyright on it. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. So in order to start, we're going to open up the Unsplash app. I'm in Procreate right now and I want to open up the Unsplash app next to Procreate. And I like using the app rather than just the website because you can drag and drop photos directly into Procreate. So I'm swiping up from the bottom and this is the Unsplash app here. It's here because I've opened it recently. So if you don't see it, just go out of Procreate, open it and then come back and you might see it here. So I'm going to take that, drag it over to the side and open it in split screen with Procreate. Now I'm going to choose the, the search button here. And what I did was I just searched person, very creative search term I know. And I started scrolling through these photos and looking for a photo that looks a bit artistic to me, um, that doesn't have a whole lot going on in the background like this. So I wanted something kind of simple and you could choose something with a, a light background or a dark background, but I went ahead with a dark background. So also something to be aware of is, is if there's a lot of patterns going on, like the pattern on the shirt in the background here, um, you probably don't want that. So it's probably good to have a photo that just is not very complicated, doesn't have a lot of patterns on it. So I chose this one because I think this looks really artistic. She's not looking at the camera. So I think it looks more artistic with her looking away from the camera and it's very dark in the background. So there's lots of space for a nice colorful bouquet in this photo. So in order to move that into Procreate, I'm just going to go like that and then drag it over like so and then it imports into Procreate. Okay, so now that our photo has imported, we can see it here. So I'm just going to close Unsplash and then open up that photo. So the first thing that I want to do is to duplicate it. And this is because I want to always have the, the photo just available to turn on and off down here, but up top, I'm actually going to change the opacity so that we can see what we're doing on top. So I'm going to the, the first I'm going to turn the bottom layer off and then going to the end on the second one. And then I'm going to change it to about 80 so that we can still see the photo, but it's a little bit lighter so that we can see what we're doing on top of it. So eventually we will just have this one showing. Um, but I want it, and I could just do this all in one layer and just change the opacity up and down, but I wanted to be able to 
very quickly switch between these two so that I can always kind of keep an eye on how things are looking. So that's why I wanted to have a full opacity version back there just to make it easier to do that. So now I'm adding a new layer on top of the photo and I'm going to be using my ephemera stamps brush set that comes with my mixed media collage set. So actually I've got my mixed media brushes and my ephemera stamps brushes. Both of these coming with my mixed media collage brush set. <clears throat> and my stamps I'm going to be using black to apply the stamps and then I will be coloring them after the fact. So that's why I needed to have this this layer be low opacity so that I can actually see the black stamps on top of it. So to start out with, we're going to go to flower stamp number 19. And the reason that I've chosen 19 is because it's, it's fairly round and it's kind of a bouquet rather than a single flower. So I wanted to have a nice a nice robust bouquet of flowers as the main thing and then I will be adding a few stamps around it as well. So I've chosen flower 19 and wherever you tilt your stamp um, this part of I'm sorry wherever you tilt your pen this part of your pen is going to be facing up on these flowers. The size is about two-thirds of the way up and I'm just stamping it on there Obviously that's not where we're going to keep it, but I want to be able to manipulate it and put it where I want it to be. So I want these this part to be right at the top. And I want actually this part here tilted a bit so that it kind of lines up with her jawline. And this is still see-through. You can still see what's underneath because we will actually be coloring these in in a moment. But I'm just positioning this, kind of feeling out how it's looking. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. Bring it up like this. And I want all of her lips to show, so I'm just going to keep on adjusting this. So I kind of like how her lips are just kind of popping out on, in between these two areas here. And this flower is lining up with her jawline. And then we did not overlap with the top up here. So I'm happy with that. And I will leave it like that so far. And you can turn this off just to see how the stamp looks by itself. We will be coloring this in. But first we're just going to go ahead and put all of the stamps in. And I think I actually want to change the opacity of that down to about 75, just so that we can see a little bit better. So when working with stamps, it's very important to make sure each stamp is on its own layer, because if you put them on the same layer, for instance, then I couldn't rotate it and make it smaller without affecting the previous stamp. So it's important for them always to be on their own layer. So next we're going to, still in the ephemera stamps folder, we're going to put a bird in here. So the birds are at the top, I think. Yes, okay, so bird number three, we're going to put this in here. I think I want it to be fairly small. Double checking that we're in a separate layer. Okay, that's quite large, so I'm gonna make it even smaller. I was thinking to have it over here. So now let's adjust that a little bit. I thought it might be nice if the bird looks a little bit like it's about to get some nectar out of this flower right here. But I didn't want the stem to just be, I wanted the stem to sort of be coming out from behind something. So I'm just gonna keep adjusting it until it looks the way I want. I think I'm okay with that. So this looks like it's coming up from behind the flower, which I will color in after. 
and it kind of looks like the bird is interested in this flower here. So I think that we still need something over here and possibly a little something here as well. So let's make a new layer. We've still got black selected. And let's look for another flower. Flower 22, we're gonna go with this one. I wanted something that's a contrast. So this is a really robust bouquet and I wanted something that's kind of spindly and small. So we're gonna go with flower 22 and just put that over here. Um, that is a little bit big. And actually I want this layer to be below everything else so it's coming out from underneath everything. So I'm making it smaller and I've got my layer behind everything. So the flower should come out sort of parallel with this. Let's see if I can move that a bit. I'm having a bit of trouble deciding where I want this because I still want the bird to look like it's drinking out of this flower. And this new flower is kind of getting in the way of that. It's a bit hard to visualize it without the colors but the colors will come in a moment. So I think I'm going to put it like this, maybe just a bit more. Okay, I think I'm gonna leave it like that. Maybe we need to rotate it just a bit more. Okay, and let's go ahead and make another layer for another flower and I want a big flower this time so again with the contrast we've got a little spindly flower here we've got a nice bouquet and now I want a really big flower so I wanted to go with flower number seven a nice big sunflower and what we're going to do is just stamp it down here and I actually wanted to erase some of this so that we only got the flower or the flower head and this little leaf here. So I'm making sure this is on its own layer still. We're gonna to go to the eraser and we can choose the airbrushing soft brush and that's just a standard Procreate brush and keeping the size fairly small, just erase some of this so that we don't have this stem. Okay, and I think that is fine. So now going to the arrow tool, we're just going to move it up here and take this, this empty space here. I think it fits nicely into that little groove. So I'm gonna leave that there. And let's have a look at how things are looking composition wise. I think we might need a little something here and here. I'm just going to turn the face back on so we can see. Let's add another layer and have a look for a very small flower that we might use. I think I want to use a little bit of, of foliage here. Keep that rather small. and use that here. And I think actually I'm okay with this not having anything on it because her eye is right here and so you're gonna be able to see just a tiny bit of her eye coming out from behind this and her hair. So I wanted to just keep that as it is, but I'm actually going to adjust this a little bit more. So what I'm doing when I'm adjusting this, I just want to try and make sure everything is getting its what the space that it deserves and nothing's really overlapping and everything just sort of fitting in nicely. 
with everything else. Okay, so we have our composition here, which we will color in in just a moment. I wanted to add a couple more things, a little, some little butterflies, one here and one here, that will be sort of nestled into her hair. So let's add another layer, still using black. Let's find some butterflies. So I tested this before making this recording and I figured out that the butterflies that have a lot of dark in them, like these areas here, they don't work so well with this photo because the background is black so they're not going to show up unless I use a different color. So I wanted to go with number six and the moth number two because they don't have a lot of, of uh, intense color in them. It's more of an outline. So let's put a little butterfly here and then add a new layer, choosing moth number two. And let's see how that looks over here. And I think that maybe we'll move this moth down a little bit, like so. And I want to actually make it look nestled into the hair, so I wanna have a little bit of hair that can kind of go over it. I'll show you how we're gonna do that soon. And I think this one is okay where it is. So let's go ahead and color our stamps. So the way that we can do this is below each of these stamp layers, I'm going to add a new layer, and then I'm going to use one of my mixed media brushes to roughly color so that it stands out. So we can go ahead and do that with the, um, this nice little spindly flower over here first. We'll just choose the bottom, the, the photo layer, add a new layer on top of that. And the color palette that I've chosen to use is my Mixed Media Rainbow color palette, which comes with the brush set, the um, Mixed Media Collage brush set. And I wanted to choose these colors because they are very vibrant and I thought it would be a nice pop of color on top of this black and white image to have these flowers just be full of color. So I'm going to go ahead and start with this flower here. I think it will look good as kind of a blue flower. So I'm choosing the blue and the brush that I wanted to use for this is in my, my mixed media brush set. Um, it's the soft pencil brush. And you can really use any, if you have a favorite brush, you can just use your favorite brush for coloring in to do this part. It doesn't have to be this brush. Um, if you're on a black background, it does need to be something that that really stands out. And that's why I've not chosen the, the hard pencil. So um, you could also use, if you have a white background, for instance, you could use a watercolor brush or um, you could use, you know, any number of sort of coloring in brushes that you might have for this. Or you could use the airbrush, but I, I'm not using that one because I wanted something that has more control with the pressure um, so that I could color in the lines. And you can, you can do a selection if you want in order to help you color within the lines, but I kind of wanted it to be a little bit rough so that um, it just looked like I've been scribbling on it. I didn't want it to be something that um, looked really clinical. So with that said, I'm just gonna start coloring in. And because this layer is behind the stamp, you can still see the outlines showing through. And as I'm doing this, I might speed up the camera at some uh, a few points. Um, and then we will just take the speed down and have a, have a chat every now and then about what I'm doing. So now I'm just going to keep coloring in a couple different colors on this stamp. And as we are coloring in on the stamp, we're just going to keep an eye on how things are looking. So we can always zoom out and then this is where it really comes in handy that we've got this bottom layer. So we can easily turn that on and see how that's looking on a black background. And I think that's fine for now. 
So let's keep on coloring the stem. I'm going to choose the green and just keep on going. One of the reasons also why I didn't want to have a selection that makes sure I'm coloring inside the lines is because I might intentionally go outside the lines while coloring in the stamps. Like this is, is very messy. It's not, um, it's not really precise, but I think that whenever we turn on the black background, you can kind of see that it's, it's showing up a bit more if I'm not coloring inside the lines. Every now and then, if you color outside the lines too much, you can always just go and get your eraser with one of the airbrushes. I'm choosing the medium brush and just clean it up as you go. Oops. So we're just checking, everything seems okay, and we continue coloring. I wanted to add just some hints of different colors in here, kind of like what you do with a pencil drawing where you're kind of blending colors. So I wanted to keep doing that along with the stamp. The good thing about, uh, the, the thing about stamps that um, is a bit difficult in Procreate is that you just can't have a lot of different colors or you can have more than one color in a stamp so that's why I chose black for the stamps and I'm adding all of my colors behind the stamps and then I can add as many colors as I want I think what I've decided to do with this stamp is that I'm going to erase this part that's coming behind here that's kind of interfering with the bird so we just want it coming out from behind the bird and we'll color the bird in later so all that will be covered. I'll just get rid of some of this that I colored down here as well. So now moving up, let's just actually group these two together so that we know they go together and if we move them, we move them together. And I'm just going to call that flower one. So we'll make a new layer and now this new layer is underneath of our sunflower, so we will move on to coloring underneath of this. I'm just making the pencil quite a bit bigger so I can cover more space in more time. This pencil brush has a texture built into it, which I thought was a bit stamp-like looking. Stamp. I thought it looked like a stamp because it's got kind of some bits and pieces missing. And if you want it to be more filled out in certain places, you can just lift up your pen and then keep going. If it ever gets difficult to see what you're doing, then you can always go and take the opacity of the photo down a bit more so that you can see where you're supposed to color and where the photo is. I 
actually decided to go with a lighter green on this since it's so dark on the stamp. Okay, so I think that looks fine. And I'm going to go ahead and keep on going with the next stamp after grouping these two together. And I'll just call that flower two. So now we'll make a new layer underneath of this green and we'll keep going. I think my pencil needs to be quite small for this one. And I'll keep this green color on. We have a couple different styles of leaves in here, so I'm going to choose a different color for each kind of leaf. I'm not being super perfectionist about this because I am zoomed in really far, so all we're really going to see in the end is just a splash of color. And I wanted to see how it looks on a dark background. Looks fine. So let's keep going. So let's go with more of a turquoise kind of color for this other kind of leaf on here. And again, it's just very rough filling it in here and there and try not to be perfectionist because otherwise I will be doing this for many, many hours. This is definitely the most time consuming part of this whole process is coloring in the stamps. Though it is, for me at least, it's fairly meditative and enjoyable. So I'm just trying to have fun with it like I would with a coloring book. And this little bit up here can be in a slightly different lighter green color. Just want to check how that looks on the black background again. I'm not actually a huge fan of that, so I'm going to undo those strokes that I just did. And I think I want to choose a different color. I think I'm going to go with the grayish color here instead. And I'll keep the black background on so that I can see whether it's looking okay. I'm just going to keep it very much just like a hint. Okay, so let's group those. I'll just call that plant one. New layer, and now we're going to work on this big giant bouquet. So I wanted to have each of these leaves be slightly different green. So let's go ahead and start with that. And then I wanted to have the flowers all different colors as well. It's not super realistic that way, but I think it will look better in the long run that way with more colors in it. Let's see how this is looking. Those are nice, but maybe a bit dark. So let's go with a lighter green on some of these other ones. Let's try it out with this olive green. Cleaning up as I go. I don't care too much about going outside the lines a little bit, but I 
can always go back and fix it if I go outside the lines a lot. So for the remaining leaves, or at least these two big ones, I wanted to go with a fairly light bluish green color here. Again, not very realistic that all these leaves are different colors, but I think it makes the piece more interesting. I'm not very much um, I'm not very much into realistic details anyway. If you've seen all my other pieces, they're mostly completely abstract. Choosing a darker version of that color and adding that here because the leaf has spilled it over a bit here. I'm trying to decide what color these three should be. I think something fairly light like this. We'll see how that looks. That might actually be the same color I used there. So let's not. So I'm trying to figure out what color I want it to be. I'll go with this one and then I might just lighten it later on with some more colors. So turning on the background layer, I'm happy with where this is going, but I want to add just a few highlights to these leaves before moving on to the flowers. So I'm keeping that same soft pencil and just going to add some colors in. I'm using a light touch to just get a hint of these other colors in here. And I'm following the the veins and the leaves to do this. Okay, so I'm turning off that back photo layer and let's go ahead and move on to the flowers. So because this one is so complex, I think I'm just going to make another layer so that we've got the leaves on one and the flowers on a separate one, just in case anything goes wrong. So I will go ahead and do the stems and the leaves and then move on to the flowers. And I can see that I've missed a few leaves on here, so I'll just work on those. Okay, now that the greenery on this part is done, I'm just checking again about how we're looking. It's looking very silly without the flowers. So let's go ahead and add the flowers. And I'm going to be choosing from the pink and the yellow and sometimes the blue to fill in these flowers. So I need just a few more flowers and then there's a leaf here that I missed, but I feel like I need something a little bit lighter. Having a look at it with the dark background back on. So I'm going to go with this really light goldish yellow color and see how that looks. I'm just making sure I'm on the right layer. Now I'm getting my green and going to some of these that I've forgotten, like this leaf, this little bit here. 
And then once I have done that, I'm just going to go over this stamp one more time, like the middle of the flowers, and just add a couple more colors to a few areas before we move on to the next stamp. I keep zooming out because I just want to see if I've missed anything. Okay, I think that I am finally done with that stamp, that big one in the middle. I'm fairly happy with how that is turning out. So I'm going to group these layers. Here's the original stamp. And then grouping all of that, let's call it flower three. Okay, and now we've got a bird and two butterflies. So the bird has some greenery on it, so we will go ahead and do that first. And I think I want to keep the color of the greenery fairly dark because I don't want it to stand out too much and there's not a whole lot of outline on this stamp. So I'm going to make a new layer, put it below the bird, and that will be where we color in. And I'm gonna go with this very dark bluish green. Let's just check how that looks on top of this. I think that's fine. So we'll keep going. For the bird itself, I wanted to choose a sort of yellowish, greenish, dark color and just fill the whole thing in and then add a few more colors. So let's have a look at the bird on the dark background. I think that is working out okay. I'm just gonna keep the dark background on while I finish the bird. Actually, I feel like I've lost one of his legs. There it is. So with the background layer back on, I'm just going to add a few more colors to our bird. Keeping an eye on how it's looking. I just want to make his eye look super yellow so it stands out. I think we need a little bit of red on the bird. Okay, so looking at this on the dark background, I feel like this stem is really dark and I wanted to add a bit of lightness to that. So I'm going back to my flower one Actually, let's just group these first and call that bird. And now we're going back to flower one and the coloring layer. And I'm going to choose a lighter green and then add a few highlights to this. So now as a final finishing touch, we're going to do the butterflies. So going up to this butterfly here, turning off that background again, I'm going to add a layer above that and color it and we'll do the same with that and then we will make the hair look like it's going over them. And I just realized that my color layer was over top of the butterfly, so I'm moving it underneath.
Okay, now I've colored both of these butterflies and I'm just looking to see that they're showing up. And what I wanted to do with the butterflies, let's just go ahead and group that. So what I wanted to do with the butterflies is I wanted to make them look like they were kind of entwined in the hair. So with both of these, um, I don't want to destroy them. So we're going to do a non-destructive process and by duplicating that and then turning off the bottom one and then we'll duplicate that one as well. So now we still have these layers where they're separate, but what we're going to do is the, um, the, the extra uh, butterfly that we made, we're just going to flatten each of those. And then we're going to use the eraser under materials. This comes with Procreate. There is a flowing hair brush. So with the eraser selected on the flowing hair brush, we're going to erase some of these. Oops. We're going to erase some of this so that we have a little bit of hair coming here. We're going to make it look like that hair is coming over the butterfly. By just erasing that. And let's just do a little bit here as well. And now let's go to this other butterfly, the flattened one, and do the same. Except I can see we've got some, really got some issues around the edges here. So I'm first going to go back to my airbrushing under the eraser and clean up the edges. Okay, with that done, still on the eraser tool, we're going back to materials, flowing hair. And I think we will put some hair over the edge here. And then maybe a bit right here as well. Just a little bit on top as well. So I think that we are done with this piece. I'm just gonna go around and look to see if there's anything that needs a little bit of touch up. So I'm going back under the eraser. I'm going back to airbrushing on my medium brush. And I'm just going to clean up the edges a little bit now that we've, oh, and I might have to actually select that layer. So with the gestures in Procreate, if you have it set to the default, if you tap and hold on a certain area, then you'll see all the layers pop up that are in that area. So I can just quickly select the color layer and then I can erase on that layer. So I wanted to be to clean up, especially in these areas that are have a lot of contrast here. Some some places it doesn't matter so much, but if there's a lot of contrast, then it does matter. So I think that we are about done with this piece. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and like I said you don't you can you, there's really so many so many opportunities to use different kinds of graphics anything that you have um, these stamps or just any any other kind of graphics that you can find and that are copyright free you can use to make a collage and you can do this with friends and family or clients and it's just kind of a fun way to do a portrait so I hope that you enjoyed the tutorial and thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.